We are gonna build the best 10-man composition for raiding in Cataclysm right now. Alright, if you saw my video on 25-man, well, let me tell you this is gonna be nothing like the 25-man video. Uh, there is only a handful of things that you can get away with in a 10-man composition. Uh, like, for example, do you have utility for the mechanics? We're talking like interrupts, invulnerability, porges, battle reses. You really need that, because remember that in Cataclysm, for whatever reason, uh, check out my 10-man raiding trap video. For whatever reason, in, in Cataclysm they balanced 10-man raiding with the same mechanics as 25-man, right? So a 25-man raid has twice the interrupts as a 10-man, but you're expected to do the same amount of interrupts, so on and so forth. So utility and, and abilities that matter for mechanics are more important than ever in 10-man, and this composition is gonna reflect that. Anyway, we're gonna start with a main tank, right? This is the guy that's gonna be tanking the boss. We're gonna need somebody that can take big, big damage. And honestly, there is only two real options for it at the start. We're going to talk about the, the Blood Decay or the Feral Tank. Where's the Feral Tank right here? There you go. The Feral Tank. That's your only, only two options that you can get for a main tank. Uh, feral Combat is a little better at early on, like early tier 11. But for most intense purposes, Blood is better. Uh, they, they can survive a lot more damage. They have more damage themselves, which... In 25 men it doesn't matter that much, in 10 men having a tank that does decent damage matters quite a bit because you, you're in tight timers for a lot of fights. Both the Blood Decay and the Feral Tank have battle reses, so yeah, that, that's important too. But we're gonna go with the Blood Decay because this is objectively the most uh, important, the most optimal choice here. And now we gotta go for an off tank, okay? So an off tank is the one that is gonna be tanking the side mobs and in many fights he's gonna be required to be DPSing. So ideally they wanna get a, an off spec, a dual talent build for it. But yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need somebody that can do AOE tanking. That is the most important role of, a, of an off tank. There is only two real roles that can do this well. Again, the Feral Druid and the Protection Paladin. That's your two options. And once again, even though I love the Feral Combat, the Feral Druid, the Feral Druid is excellent at tanking uh, and they are competent at AOE too. Protection wins out again because Protection not only has as good uh, AOE tanking in general, they have a lot of utility, they have blessings, blessings are so important in Cataclysm, uh, like not, not as important as before actually, but they are important, they have a lot of buffs, they got auras, and of course they got uh, many utility abilities that reduce the damage taken by the raid, that is very important because not only you're taking 20% of the damage of the raid, you are also protecting the tank, right? 20% less damage to the main tank on cooldown. If you time it right, uh, if your uh, off tank is paying attention, that is huge. Very few things can compare to the protection paladin. Another cool thing about the Protection Paladin is that it scales so well that by the time you're hitting Dragon Soul, they, they outscale the Blood Decays. They can be a main tank like a Blood Decay, even though they are not supposed to, just because of how strong they get. Uh, Protection Paladin is the optimal choice. Again, you can take Feral for either of these roles, you're gonna be fine, but it is not the optimal one, so we're not gonna put it here. Why not a Prot Warrior? Because the Prot Warrior sucks. Simple as. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the healers. We're gonna need two healers, right? For some particular fights, you may need a third healer. Uh, that's not common though. You can just tell whatever DPS -er that you got to change specs if you really need to. Anyways, for healers, we're gonna need uh, basically a Discipline Priest. This one is mandatory. I just... There is no argument not to take a Discipline Priest. They have the best utility, they have the best HP buff, and again buffs are important. Uh, they have Pain Suppression, they have Power Infusion, they have... Uh, what's the, the big one? I got it in my notes here. I, I, I kind of forgot here, let's see. Powered Word Barrier, there we go. That's another Protection Paladin worth of mitigation for the whole raid. It's a, an AOE damage reduction again. If you do not take a Discipline Priest, you are trolling. Uh, Discipline Priests are decent at tank uh, healing and AOE healing at the same time. 
Uh, they, they are not particularly excellent at either, but they are good. But since they can work on both very well, that is also very valuable in 10 men, because again, you only got two healers, so you need something that can work in many, many things. And now we gotta talk about the second healer, okay? And now for the off, the second healer, maybe main healer and off healing is a little misleader, let's just call it one and two. Second healer. Uh, we got two options here. You got the Holy Paladin and the Restoration Druid. The Holy Paladin spams a bunch of small heals very fast. They can either tank heal or raid heal, supplementary raid healing, okay? Let me make that very clear. If you are only relying on a Holy Paladin for raid healing, you're gonna die. But they can supplement raid healing very well because of their uh, flash of light spamming. Uh, it's like playing whack-a-mole, you know, they throw a bunch of tiny heals at whoever is low. But we got a priest and we got a holy paladin that should be enough AoE healing for whenever you are taking a lot of raid damage. And holy is probably one of the best base load tank healers. They don't have a lot of big cooldowns to like heal a tank really fast. But as far as like keeping the tank healed just by channeling one spell, they are very mana efficient and they are very good at that. So yeah, Holy Paladin is probably the most optimal choice. Once again, you get more blessings. You can take up to three Paladins in a raid with before you run out of good blessings to put on people and otherwise you can take a restoration druid restoration druids are so busted they are excellent at tank healing and aoe healing at the same time uh, because of how hots work they are also very predictable tank healers which makes the disciplines uh, priest job a little easier to keep the tank alive uh, they scale very well too uh, restoration is just a very strong overall but Utility wise is a little bit lacking. We're gonna put the Holy Paladin here because I think that's a little more cookie cutter. Uh, you can take a Restoration uh, Druid. He also got a Battle Rest. Uh, you are fine if you take a Restoration Druid here. But we're gonna take the Holy Paladin. I guess it makes a little more sense. Why are we not taking Resto Jamans and why are we not taking Holy Priest? That's gonna be a common question. Uh, Resto Jamans are not reliable healers. In a 25-man raid where they can like heal whatever they feel like healing, whatever their cooldowns and procs make it more optimal to heal is fine. In a nutshell, the way a Resto Shaman works is that he sometimes heals the tank and he sometimes heals the raid and like he's not supposed to be healing uh, one of them, only one of them. Uh, they are more optimal played that way, so they, they do not work for a 10-man. You don't have the, the, the slack. You don't have the wiggle room to have something unreliable like that. And the Holy Priest is only an AoE spec in Cataclysm. Like, that's the only good thing they got. It's an excellent AoE healing, but it is not a priority. And we really need more tank healing in this comp. So we are not going to take a Holy Healer either. Now, if you can do some math, that means that we got six slots that are for DPSers only here. So uh, we are gonna try to focus on getting every important buff on the on the comp first, and then we will talk about the, the two wild cards you're gonna have. First of all, we're gonna take an Elemental Shaman. They do big damage, they buff casters, uh, they got 10%, uh, sorry, uh, 5% speed haste. Is it is the Rat of Air Totem, I don't remember. It's, ra it's spell haste is really strong. They also got spell damage with Totemic um, Rat, I think it's called the talent. It is, it good overall is basically a free flame tongue totem that they got carrying right now so they, they are very excellent spellcaster buffers and we're gonna take I think three spellcasters here so yeah that's gonna matter they are also very bursty burst damage super important in cataclysm uh, elemental shaman is just an s tier spec over overall so it would be a waste not to take him and that's gonna take us to the next actually the next uh, top tier spec right here and that is arms warrior i know people argue with me about the icon this is the icon of arms warrior uh, sorry man uh, deal with it that's always been the icon it's not the assassination rogue they just appropriated the icon anyway <laughs> We are gonna take arms because once again they are an S tier spec right now. They are some of the best DPSers in the game for many, many fights. Ideally, the warrior should be able to shift between arms and fury because in some fights, fury is gonna be a little more optimal, but that is not a huge deal. Uh, they, ha they have a, a bunch of damage, cliff damage, especially burst damage too. Uh, they, they are all around a good DPSer. Like, I would be trolling not to take him. So, yeah, he's going in. Now, normally, we would want some sort of melee haste buff 
for this party here because we're gonna put a, a bunch of melees but the elemental shaman is gonna be taking wrath of el right so he's not gonna be having wind fury for the 10 percent haste and that is where the survival hunter comes in where is survival here there we go survival hunter gets the same 10 percent uh, these are, ignore the, the, the tool tips here, this is a Rato the Lich King composition maker from Wowhead, but it has a 10% haste, just like a Cataclysm Wind Fury would, so it's gonna be part of the, the DPS group for that reason. Uh, they are also very good, Survival is one of the best specs in the game, Hunters are vital, vital DPSers in Cataclysm, and we got three very strong specs right here off the bat. And now in the list, this is gonna be probably a little more controversial, I think not a lot of people like the Arcane Mage, but we're gonna put an Arcane Mage here. Uh, they start off very strong, so this is very true in tier 11, tier 12, uh, maybe not so much in tier 13, it depends on when you're watching this video. Either way, Arcane, excellent DPSer, uh, they are very 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 good, they have a buff that increases party damage by 3%, that is pretty good they have the mage intellect buff we gotta take a mage remember and of course they got time warp that is just bloodlust again you can change this mage for a fire mage if you want to it's not too bad but arcane is a little more optimal and with these eight ones here we covered up all the basic buffs that we wanna carry here and now we got two wild cards here that we gotta fill up okay this is ideally when you take your friend that plays a, a spec that you don't need that's where you would take him but i'm gonna i'm gonna mention the most optica, optimal specs anyway for here your first concern should be interrupts right now and there is a fair amount of specs that have decent interrupts or even the best interrupt that is the enhancement shaman right here uh, they got the best interrupt in the game they are also very decent they can also put a, a stone skin totem on the tanks that seems to come in handy and they got a porsche porsche is mother in some fights you probably could use more porsches here this is probably what i would take in this situation you can also take for example an assassination rogue we're gonna put the the bench here maybe uh, you can take an assassination rogue too it's gonna work out fine they got a kick they got a lot of damage uh, they got a decent spec overall i probably wouldn't take it but you can it's good you also got the demonology warlock right here uh, this is one of the best casters in the game we're talking like uh, insane aoe damage top of the line single target damage uh, very very strong spec overall uh, they also got a battle res you need battle reses as much as you can possibly get them remember that in cataclysm soul stone is a res now it's not just the soul stone that we're used to anymore or another potential approach you can have is that you want to get another paladin another paladin for the blessings that is also handy you can get another interrupt with rebuke and retribution just happens to be badass broken in cataclysm so uh, you're not missing much by taking one of these these four right here for the last two spots is what i would call the more optimal choices you can get but now we're gonna go for some honorable mentions because you got a bunch of wiggle room here you got unholy decay lots of damage also a battle rest pretty good shadow priest lots of clip damage where's priest here lots of clip damage uh, free mana regeneration is also a very cool spec feral dps this is probably the most mid spec out of there I could take but yeah it's coming around it, it can work uh, frost decay you get the best melee haste in the game right but at the cost of terrible damage so yeah and affliction warlock you know because the spell hunter is pretty cool you get a bunch of mana regeneration i guess i should mention it is also decent and that's about it i ran out of specs i think really but yeah this is as long as you got the first eight slots covered right the two wild cards over here you can take whatever of these sorry about that you can take whatever of these ones on the on the right here and you're gonna be fine if i were you for the last two spots i would probably look for like a very skilled player not so much the spec but somebody that is very good and just try to stack as much dps numbers as possible here but yeah let's let's make the call here i'm gonna put enhancement and retribution arbitrarily here and yeah, I, I love the, making these videos because I know, I can already tell that people are gonna disagree with me to the death on this and I welcome you. As a matter of fact, I would love to see what's your ideal spec for Cataclysm in the comments. Let me know, I am genuinely curious. And anyway, subscribe to the channel and join the Discord and thank you for watching.